Hey guys, how's it going? My name is Little Big Man, and welcome back to Football News for Idea, where I basically sum up the the football news from the past week. Um, uh, and this is basically the the Poundland equivalent of FTW. Um, but in a week where Greg's uh and Primark have a a fucking a weird crossover that seems to take over Newcastle. Um, not football wise. But actual prime market in Newcastle because they keep selling out of the stuff, and a week where we are on the verge of World War Three. Um, obviously football has not uh, disappointed once again with uh, the results. Um, uh, obviously I'll start off by uh, sending, you know, my best wishes to all of the families uh, in Ukraine that are obviously having to deal with the absolute shit show. That is the war between Russia and Ukraine. That is that would have started today. Obviously, I'm recording this on Thursday as I normally do. Um, but it's it's disgusting behavior from Putin. Really, he's a fucking a horrible cunt. Really, but yeah, it's he's clearly been wanting this for a while. But yeah, my my condolences to all those that have died already in the explosions and. Yeah, like I said, best wishes to all of those in Ukraine, and I I really wish uh, for this to be do- all done soon. Um, but in a more positive light, um, obviously the Premier League uh, and the Champions League have been played. Obviously, we've got Europa League matches currently on. I'll start with the Premier League. Um, so I think biggest, what do we say? But yeah, biggest story is probably this Liverpool. Six Leeds United nil, which I mean is a bit of a thumping, to say the least. Um, obviously they play Liverpool played at the weekend, beat Norwich three one. Um, with Leeds playing on Sunday and losing four two to Man United, so not a good week for Leeds. Um, and a bit of a roller coaster week for Tottenham Hotspur, who beat Man City three two after a last minute Harry Kane winner. To obviously beat Manchester City, um, and then to to lose one nil to a Ben Me header against Burnley kind of sums up Tottenham really. Obviously, Antonio Conte has been very vocal uh, about um his uh, his team really, which a bit early for him to start losing the plot, but. Uh, you know, it's, I mean, it's obviously bound to happen. Tottenham are that kind of team. They're a bit of a, 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 I don't know, it's weird. It's weird. I'm not, I'm not an expert on it. Obviously, if you want all the knowledge on football, be sure to check out Matt Hayes' Tottenham blog. Obviously, he's a diehard Tottenham fan. He loves the club. Um, so yeah, obviously go over to his channel for that information. Um, in other news, obviously Arsenal managed to, you know right there wrong from the start of the season in beating Brentford with a 2-1 win at home uh, after their loss in the first weekend with Alexander Lacazette taking the piss as Ivan Toney did after that match um, a nice kick about lads um, which you know <laughs> good shit house so we've got to applaud it um, uh, obviously we'll talk about Newcastle with a 1-1 draw against West Ham away from home with our strongest players out it's a fantastic point to, to earn really against championship, uh, championship champions league fighting opponents um obviously joe willick equalizing in the dying seconds of the first half um after going one nil down can't remember who scored but <laughs> yeah so a nice uh, nice one one draw t- takes the point um, and with the result going in our favor that means that we go, we stay 17th and we're now two points uh, above the drop zone after Burnley's win to Tottenham, which doesn't help us. But we do, uh, you know, have a game in hand on the likes of Watford and Norwich, um, who are, if my math is correct, four and five points behind. Uh, we... Obviously, do have a game in hand on Leeds, 
uh, and two games in hand on Brentford, who we played this weekend away from home again. Uh, but the, the form's in our favour. So, obviously, we beat Brentford. We very much create a bit more of a, a relegation battle for the bottom... I mean, the bottom six, there's only three points separating them. Bottom seven, four points separating. I'm lying. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm not lying. I'm not lying. There's, I mean, obviously, Burnley 20 points at 18. You've got Brentford on 24 points at 14. So, obviously, if we beat Brentford, we'll leapfrog them. And if Burnley win their match this weekend, that obviously means that they're only one point behind Brentford. And then, obviously, it does depend on how Leeds and Everton uh, muster up their challenges. Um, considering Everton play Man City and Leeds play Tottenham, obviously, not too favourable for either of them. Um, I guess, realistically, we do have the better chance of uh, making ground in the relegation battle. Um, but, obviously, going up to the top of the table... Uh, the Manchester City loss and Liverpool winning their game in hand does mean that the gap closes to three points between Manchester City in first and Liverpool in second, with Chelsea trailing 10 points on Liverpool in third position, which is a bit of a surprise considering, I mean, I had Chelsea to win the league, really. But, um, yeah, obviously that's widened yeah, which opened up a title race, um, and then obviously the battle for top four remains with uh, West Ham dropping points to Newcastle. Obviously, like I've mentioned, and Man United winning uh, against Leeds does kind of help them uh, as they are pushed up to fourth and are four points ahead of fifth place West Ham, who are level on points with Arsenal but only a goal ahead. So it does make it a bit exciting, the uh, top four race. As we push down to the final 12, 13, 14, or in Burnley's case, 15 games. Uh, I was making sure my maths didn't let me down there. Um, it'll be interesting to see how it ends. Um, obviously, next match day vlog will be Southampton to waste. Southampton away, so be sure to watch that. Um, I'll move on to the Champions League now. I'll do FPL stuff next season. Um, <laughs> so, obviously, we had Benfica drawing 2-2 against Ajax in a rather entertaining game. Um, and then the, the biggest game of the, the night being uh, Atletico Madrid and a Manchester United 1-1 draw from Wednesday evening. And then from Tuesday, we had Villarreal 1, Juventus 1, and then Chelsea coming up 2-0 winners against Lille. Um, so, obviously, it does make it slightly interesting for the second leg as there's no real runaway. Um, runaways for the... the the next round, uh, other than Man City, who are currently 5 0 up on aggregate against Sporting Lisbon. So, <laughs> yeah, there's a. Um, just kind of, you know, shit on Lisbon in a way, but, you know, an Anthony Langer uh, equaliser helped Man U against Atletico Madrid in what seemed to be a, a best. I didn't watch the match personally, but. I, not as exciting battle between the two teams. Um, obviously, the second leg, Madrid will be slightly worried as obviously Ronaldo hits Atletico Madrid. So it'll be interesting to see what happens there. But uh, yeah, I mean, there's no real favourable winners other, than, like I said, other than Man City. Obviously, PSG only won one 0 against Madrid. So it'll be interesting to see how that happens. Obviously, there's no Champions League next week, so there is a bit of a break. Um, obviously, Bayern Munich-Salzburg was only a 1-1 draw, but you'd imagine Bayern would 
run away with it in the second leg. Uh, so it'll be interesting to see how that happens in two weeks' time. Uh, I pro- no, actually, I'll be back. I'll be back. Oh, actually, mm. I might have to record the Friday night, Friday night football uh, on the Friday. Ignore me, I'm just talking to myself. Um, Europa League action uh, for the second leg fixtures. Bring it up because it doesn't give me the aggregate scores. So the matches that have been played, uh, Dynamo Zagreb winning 1-0 against Sevilla. However, Sevilla have won 3-2 on aggregate. We've had RB Leipzig with a 5-3 win on aggregate over Real Sociedad, winning 3-1 in the, the second leg. Um, overturning, I guess, the 2-2 during the first leg, if my math is correct. Uh, Atalanta run away with a 5-1 aggregate win against Olympiacos with a 3-0 Dominating performance away from home, uh, and Porto scraping a four three win and on aggregate against Lazio after a two two draw between the sides in the second leg. Um, obviously, My miss, oh, because the first, right, right, ignore me, ignore me, because the first place team joining in the round of 16. Um, obviously, the, the 8 o'clock kickoffs for this evening, so in 15 minutes' time, it'll be Napoli Barcelona, who are currently 1 1 on aggregate, so obviously, be interesting to see what happens there. You've got Rangers who are hoping to defend their 4 2 lead against Borussia Dortmund um, on aggregate. Uh, you'd imagine at home at Ibrox, you'd fancy their chances, but I'll be interested to see how Dortmund can react, um, especially considering they had a very convincing 6-0 win at the weekend. You've got Sheriff, who are currently leading 2-0 against Braga, uh, and go to Braga uh, for the second leg. Um, and you've got Real Betis leading 3-2 against Zenit St. Petersburg. Um, on aggregate and are at home, which is a bit probably lucky for for Real Betis, especially considering the current issues in Russia. So obviously there'll probably be a fair bit mentioned about that later on. Um, speaking of the Premier League earlier, uh, Arsenal are currently playing. And by the sounds of it, should have had a penalty. I'm not watching the match. Uh, yeah, currently against Wolves. 40 seconds in, should have had a penalty for what I'm hearing. Um, but yeah, it'll be interesting to see what happens with that match. Um, obviously, another news, uh, related to transfers, you've, you've got more links um, regarding Kylian Mbappé and where he'll end up in the summer. Um, supposedly, Paris Saint-Germain have offered the French forward uh, a blank check just to kind of write down whatever numbers he wants. However, Kylian ha- himself has apparently refused said offer. Um, so it does seem likely he is wanting to leave and join Real Madrid as he has been very bo- vocal about for a few years now. Um. No real uh, links for Newcastle for the summer. However, we have uh, almost secured a new director of football in Dan Ashworth, which is very exciting. Um, Obviously, for the summer, it'll be great to have a good bit of knowledge and a smart individual uh, to help us progress forward with our charge for climbing the league table and you know pushing even further so obviously push for mid table uh, European qualification spots and eventually the title based on the owner's ambitions 
but that will do it for today's episode of Friday Night Football. I'm very sorry it's not a normal podcast one. Um, I did have guests lined up. Obviously, a few, the ha- I get my words out. Obviously, last minute things have came up for them, and I probably could have waited. But I'm very sorry, Rugby. It's just I kind of want to get some of them because I am quite hungry and I'm just getting from work. Um, but yeah, wish you a like if you have enjoyed, uh, and let me know your thoughts in the comments below and anything I've mentioned and anything I haven't mentioned. I'm all ears. Uh, and be sure to subscribe because I will be getting out uh, these Friday Night Football every we upload every Friday, but I will be recording them every Thursday because of work um, and I don't really have great deal of time on a Friday. I'm normally working Fridays, so um but yeah that'll do it for this episode. Thank you very much for watching. Adios.